Hey everybody, it's Haneke here and today I'm going to do some building tips. I've been asking you guys what you wanted to see more of and one of the things that most of you wanted to see was more building tips. So I'm going to do a few of those. Today we are going to go to Tyler County Dirt Track because it is the largest flat area with low level enemies that is a workshop that I can think of. Wade Airport is another one, but the problem with Wade Airport is it's got a big piece of stuff down the middle that gets in the way of building. So Tyler County is much better because the whole area inside the arena is buildable. So let me show you the map of where it is. It's in the north of the map, just to the northwest of Vault 76. And as you can see from up here, it's a big flat area with no junk in the way. All the cars that are in Tyler County Dirt Track are removable, so I've already removed them. And the best thing about building at a workshop is it doesn't really use your own resources, it uses the workshop resources, so it's a good place for test builds. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to build a basic floating floor. So first of all, let's put down some foundation blocks. I'm going to go for 3x3, three three, just to give us a bit of space. mind that enormous hole in the corner there let's fix that up right three by three so the very first thing we need to do is put walls with a door hole around the boundary of where we want the building that will be floating above this area to form so you need to use a door hole because later on I'm going to remove these pieces and you can only remove them if they have a door hole because the door holes have different rules than the other pieces which are the solid wall and the window. It will work with any wall except the basic shack wall which is the very first one that you get when you start the game. So it doesn't have to be an atom shop wall like the one I'm using, it can also be like the barn wall or the metal walls or any of the um, the vanilla walls in the game except for the the old shack wall that's the only one you can't use so now we've got our walls in I'm going to put in some basic vanilla roofs So now we have our roof pieces on, what we're going to do is put walls on the piece that will be floating. So this is why we need the walls underneath because you cannot build a wall on top of a roof unless it has support from underneath. So it's important to have the walls underneath, then place these ones on top and then in a little bit we will be removing the underneath ones and leaving only what is above the roof. just put the roof onto the top part of the building. This top part is the bit that will be floating. And I'm just making a basic one, nothing too fancy. Oh no, I failed the event I wasn't participating in. Okay, so we've got the roof on top of the building and now we are going to remove the bottom section. Now here's where the magic happens. Each of these flat roof pieces, which are also the floor, need to be converted into the pointy corner piece. Now the reason for that is the pointy corner piece has different rules than the other roof pieces. I'm not sure whether it's an oversight from Bethesda or whether they intend this to happen. 
but in general you cannot remove walls from below a roof unless the roof is the pointy corner piece. So that last piece there is the last supporting piece. So I need to convert that one into a pointy corner and now I should be able to remove it. Okay. Now we're going to convert all these ones back into the flat ones. So now our house is floating and from this point you can go ahead and convert walls into windows and start decorating and that sort of thing but for our purposes we're just making an example we don't really need to get too carried away. This is me while getting a bit carried away and converting things into windows and walls. Anyway, there we go. You can see it's not connected to the ground at all. And this helps to avoid attacks from enemies. Well, I, I sometimes do get mole rats up there, but I think they must be magical flying mole rats or something. Anyway, that is the basic floating floor. Now let's go ahead and make a slightly fancier floating floor. I'm using the elm tree, I think it was an elm tree, possibly an oak tree, that came from the haunted house bundle because it's got a nice straight trunk. Of course you can do this around an actual tree out in the wild. I'm just using this one as an example because I want to build it in the workshop. So again we need a supporting wall so that we can attach our roof pieces. Ahead and put all the roof pieces on. Now it looks like that can click in there and maybe it can, maybe it can't, but I don't want to fill that spot in at the moment, so let's not worry about that. So what we need is a little fence around this hole. Now I can't use these fences because they need support and the roof doesn't count as support. It would work if I had a second floor up here, but it doesn't work on top of a roof, so I can't use those ones. I could use these ones if I wanted to because you can place them anywhere but I think they're a bit ugly so I'm going to go ahead and use not that one it's a bit solid this one whoops I mean this one because it's actually pretty nice looking So we're going to just go ahead and put these around the edge of this hole to stop people falling down there. And once you get the first one in the rest should just click into place. Now the next thing I want to do is build the actual structure on the top of the roof parts here. So again I need to go underneath and build supporting walls so that I can build the walls up top. Again they need to have the door hole.
and because they are now supporting the roof I can remove these other pieces without having to convert the roof into the pointy roof. As long as there's something supporting the roof you can remove the walls. It's, it's when you get to the last couple of pieces that's when it starts getting fussy. So I want to fill in this hole around this tree. So let's go back to our nice fence. Of course if you don't have this Adam shop fence you can use one of the other ones that comes in the game such as the old farm fence that's quite a nice one too. Everything that I'm showing you here is swappable you don't have to use Adam shop things you can use the vanilla versions of things. Now that we have our supporting structure underneath we can place the walls. At this point I had a brainwave. I wanted to use glass walls. I stupidly started off using the half size glass walls instead of following my own advice about using walls with door holes and then of course when I got to the bit of removing the lower level I couldn't because the half walls don't have a door in them. Anyway so I pulled them down and put glass walls with doors in them and now this should work better. Now I really hope that Bethesda brings the glass walls for sale in the Atom shop or back to another scoreboard or sells them through the gold vendors or something because they are really the most wonderful wall set. In fact I think they're probably the best wall set that's ever been made in this game. They're just so versatile. They're really good looking. They give a nice open sort of feel to your buildings. Now of course if you don't have the glass wall set you can use any wall set. If you want to give it still an open feel you could use maybe a fence instead of a wall. You could use some of those stair post things, the tall metal posts and just support another roof on the posts. There's many things that you could try. It's all about experimenting and that's another good reason to take a workshop and do some experimental builds in the workshop because it won't use up your own resources, it will use up the resources of the workshop. Right, so as you can see I converted all the roof pieces into the pointy corner roof again so that I could remove the bottom walls. Now I'm converting them back into flat pieces. And at this point all the bottom walls are gone. So now I'm going to convert all the door holes into just a solid wall. There we go, and that's looking better. Now of course I removed these little fence pieces so I need to put them back on again. And now to finish our floating greenhouse we need a roof. And again I'm going to go with the glass panels. And again if you don't have the glass building set just use something else. There's many to choose from. I 
quite like the the tin wall set. I like the brick set, you know, the vanilla one that's got red bricks on one side and a plaster stucco wall on the other side. get these fiddly little bits in there just to finish it off. floating greenhouse of sorts. Of course you could make this way bigger than what I have and give it all separate rooms and all sorts of fancy areas. Now if I was building this as my camp I would probably make this bottom story into farmable dirt tiles and plant crops and things there. That could be very nice. Farmable dirt tiles are a must-have thing that you can buy from the gold vendor at Foundation. They're not even that expensive really. However, you must have friendly level reputation with Foundation. I believe Minerva had them last week. The problem with Minerva is she takes so long to get back to any particular inventory that by the time that she does, you've probably already managed to get the item from somewhere else. Okay, so there's my floating greenhouse. Now if you built that round a big tree out in the wild, that would look really cool. Lots of plants and seats and maybe an ally. You've got to watch out with allies and floating houses because they tend to fall off. Same with collectrons, they tend to fall off if the floating house is too high and they get damaged. So you don't want to if you have an ally or a collector and you'd probably place them on the bottom level here so they don't end up falling off. Now while I was doing this, look who ran right through the middle of my workshop. It was Graham. It's the second time he's run through the middle of the workshop while I've been doing something. Anyway, that's everything for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found some useful information from it. I hope you go to a workshop and give those things a try, or even on your own house. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it if you could. It helps my channel to grow, and the more my channel grows, the more content I can bring to you. I hope to catch you in my next video, which will be out real soon. And until then, I will see you around Appalachia. This is Haneke, signing out.